Powered by the Inside the Birds podcast. Now, live from inside the Matt Black Kia Studios, it's Football at Four. All right, football at Four, it is powered by the Inside the Birds podcast. It's brought to you by PropSwap, America's sports betting marketplace. Sell your sports bets, take your profit, find out how. PropSwap.com, download the PropSwap app today. Adam Kaplan's here. And uh, he had a busy weekend. He had the Senior Bowl. He was down in Mobile. He came back. He's heading to the, where are you going, to the Super Bowl? Is that where you're heading out there this week? Yeah, tomorrow, Mike. Yeah, I'm headed to L.A. Then I, I'm crazy. I have to go to Vegas for on business. Uh, I have to get back. It's, it's, it's fun, though. You know what? I enjoy what I do. So, yeah, it's <laughs> going to be traveling. You know, quite frankly, I hadn't been on a plane since, what, August for, for training camp. So it's uh, it was, it's good to be back. But as I told you, it was, it was a little rainy in uh, Mobile last week. Well, uh, I know a lot of people looking down there, and we'll talk a little bit about uh, the senior week and what it meant and some of the things we saw. But let's start with some of the NFL news close to home. Number one, Doug Peterson hired as the Jaguars coach. Yeah. And uh, obviously, very interesting scenario. We, t- we touched on a little bit Friday. Who are some of the guys he could be bringing to Jacksonville with him? Yeah, Mike, here's what, here's what uh, you're talking about. Various NFL sources, uh, his number one target for OC would be Press Taylor. Uh, it's out there that they put in a uh, request for Pep Hamilton, the the quarterback coach last season for the Texans. The Texans, I'm told, absolutely want him back as their OC to work with Davis, Davis Mills and whoever they bring in a quarterback because they don't know who their starter is. He did a great job. He is Pep, Pep Hamilton is a terrific quarterback developer. That's really what he's known for. Um but Press Taylor is a guy that he, obviously Doug Peterson knows. It's part of why Doug's no longer the Eagles head coach. We'll see what happens. Andrew Briner, I'm told, uh, who was with him as a, an offensive analyst for one season, who was an interim head coach for Fordham. He also was uh, also was at FIU last season as an OC. He's worked with quarterbacks. Uh, defensively, Mike Caldwell is his number one choice we're hearing for defense coordinator. Uh, Mike is the inside linebackers coach for the Bucks. Uh, the two know each other from their days with the Eagles. Matt Burke could be his D-line coach. Uh, We will see what happens. Uh, Matt Burke was with Doug uh, for at least one season. He's with the Jets now uh, as a defensive assistant. Linebackers coach, I'm told, Bill Shuey. He's got a real good chance to get that. He was with Doug in Philly. Bill was with the the Bears for the past four seasons as a defensive assistant. Uh, Tim Halk is a potential safeties coach. He was a safeties coach with the Eagles under Peterson for, I think, at least four years. So, yeah, he, what he's doing so far, and this is not his whole staff, and who knows if we'll get all these guys, but typically, Mike, coaches do this. They, they hire guys that they know. Uh, now, when he was at the Eagles head coach, most of the coaches he, was, he didn't hire, uh, they were either retained from Chip Kelly's staff. They're all good, by the way. And uh, some were recommended by Howie Roseman or other people who work for Doug. And Doug had to say okay or not, but the fact of the matter is he was not the guy that in most cases did not uh, point out the guys that he, he didn't really hire these guys in Philly, whereas here he's got full control of the staff and he's either going to live or die with the guys he hires. That's really going to be, to me, his downfall or progressing uh, as a Jaguars head coach to turn them around again to have a winning program. It's going to be a lot. It's going to be on the staff that he hires. And I know, you know, over the years that we've had this segment with you, Adam, you've been critical of his staff uh, that, you know, that the team was not coached up well enough. I guess one guy, you, I, I know he didn't, he wasn't a Doug guy. He, he was hired by Chip was Stoutland. Would Doug be yeah. able to get Stoutland yeah. to go down there no in, a, a, in, no a, in, a, 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 in an upgraded role? Can they do that? I don't They'll know. never let him. They'll, they'll, I mean, he is one of the top three, if I'm told, if not the highest paid online coach in the league. There's no way the Eagles let him go. None. I mean, if they have to make him assistant head coach, whatever they have to do to keep him. I mean, he's under contract anyway, so, you know, you can't go and they can block him. But even if, let's say, I don't know what, I don't know how many years left he has on his latest extension. But, uh, you know, even if it extended, it passed over the next two years, they're not letting him go. He is so important. Uh, probably, I, I underestimated, Mike, to be honest with you, how important he is to their team. He's obviously a great coach. But it's not just coach of the offensive lineman, what he means to the run game design, uh, what he means to their personnel staff, because they trust him. Uh, he's probably one of the most trusted assistant coaches the Eagles have had in the last 30 years. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'll extend it that far. This yeah. guy's pretty special, extremely important to their success. 
I, I only bring that up because I know Doug would know him, but Doug calls the yeah. plays. He could say, hey, yeah. you could be the offensive coordinator, and I call the plays. Are you allowed to take the jump if you're going from a line coach to coordinator? Oh, well, yeah. I mean, that's for a coordinator that can't block him, but I think what would have to happen, because you have to put on, my understanding is when you put the slip in, you have to say exactly what the role is. Yeah, right. there's like maybe there's like some lines of text where you have to fill in. Okay, this is what the guy's role will be. Uh, but I mean, if they get whether it gets Press Taylor or, or Pep Hamilton, those guys aren't calling the place. Doug already said he's calling the, the place. So yeah. um, it would be a, an OC in name, like Frank Reich was, but he will not be calling the place. But again, the Eagles would do everything they, to keep him. They're just, they just they, they would not let him leave. Um, real quick on the Doug, I mean. Are you surprised? It seems that the Jack- Jacksonville fans are not thrilled with Peterson, and people are kind of like, what is wrong with you people? You're getting a guy who can stabilize this organization. How has that hiring been received? It's actually the, the problem that the fans have, because like, apparently when I put all this coaching stuff out, they make fun of Trent Baalke. I've been noticing that the fans can't stand Trent Baalke, the general manager. Um, they, they, what happened is they got wise to they're, – they're aware of what had been out there um, when he had clashes with Chip Kelly, they, they stopped talking. And Jim Harbaugh, they stopped talking uh, before um, you know, Harbaugh left the Niners. And obviously, Kelly and Harbaugh and Balky uh, were fired around the same time. So that stuff's out there. And it didn't end well for Balky. Uh, you know, he had a tough time getting back. And then he became personnel director for one year, the GM last season after uh, Dave Caldwell was fired of, of the, and obviously Davis here with Philly. But uh, it's, Look, Doug, this is Doug's only chance to be a head coach this season. He uh, interviewed others. This is the one the team they offered. And Sean Cotton, by the way, the owner of the Jaguars, did say that they wanted to talk to Doug, but Doug did not want to coach last year. But let me tell you, as an absolute fact, whether Doug would interview last year or not, Urban Meyer was getting the job. That that was obviously a terrible mistake. He was fired before his first year was over. But uh, Doug, they got their man this year. They got a guy they really like, and uh, I'm pulling for him. Doug's a good coach, and uh, we'll see what happens. All right, uh, John Gannon's not going to get the Texans job. He'll be back in Philadelphia uh, as the defensive coordinator. He was told over the weekend uh, that he will not be the Houston coach. Uh, so I guess Gannon is back here. What does that mean going forward? Yeah, a couple things. Lovey Smith will be the Texas head coach. They're negotiating with him uh, and his agent. I think his son might be his agent, at least he last was. But um, So this is important that the Eagles have this clarity down because for free agency in the draft, it, you know, it's hard to know – what their what the plan would be for defense without Gannon being involved or not knowing who their defense coordinator would be. But, you know, right now, uh, Gannon's their coordinator. He's back. Uh, he'll be in their free agency meetings. He'll be in their draft meetings. They'll have a better idea of, of what he needs. You know, because clearly the, the, the talent defense was not good enough. He was very passive. I, I ran into some teams uh, who played the Eagles. They were not complimentary on the Eagles defense. They said that they're too passive. And it's kind of what we'd heard from other teams when they play them or did advance work. So, um, you would expect to be more aggressive, get him better talent, and the defense should be better. Um, coaching staff going to be intact. We haven't heard much there. I mean, we did get that question on the final day um, to, about uh, the coaching report, Je- 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 Jeff reported on our show that uh, Mosher said that um, while there's no been no changes, they're, they're still reviewing it. So just keep an eye on that. What, what, if there might be potential, you know, maybe a couple changes, who knows, but that's what we've been hearing. Uh, the, the one thing with Gannon is interesting. Obviously, the fans couldn't stand him. They all wanted him to get hired. Um, is there anticipation? Because he was a popular hire last year. I know. And, I know. you know, is there anticipation that once he gets guys that are more fit, a fit for his scheme, that he, you know, that the defense could be that much better? Or, or was he just over mad? Why was there, is there so much, you know, uh, caution with him? I don't think he was overmatched. I think he was too cautious. Uh, not aggressive, very passive, and part of it, it's, hard, it's impossible to put a percentage on it, but part of it clearly was he didn't have good enough personnel, and he could have he could have done a better job. You know, he, he started disguising more once he learned the, the, uh, the players better, but this is not what anybody wants. They want a more aggressive defense. This is what they thought they were getting with Gannon, and they didn't get it. Now, the front office has got to do a better job of getting more talent, but Gannon's got to do a better job, and, and getting him in these meetings is going to be important. I, I would say this, if let, let's say, Mike, and we'll, you know, we'll talk more about this in our future segments, but let, let's say they bring in two to three players for the free agency who could start or could play a key role, and they have a very aggressive draft uh, in terms of defense. Let's say they draft five players for them. 
this defense is significantly better than next year, then we'll, I don't know that he would return in year three. Well, that's um, another point was, I was going to bring up, Adam, yeah. is he's gone through the cycle. He's interviewed with three teams. If they have yep. a good year, you would think he'd be back on the cycle as a circuit. Oh, as he would a, be, sure. Right, Look, as he's a, high... a highly thought of guy. Mike, he's a highly thought of guy, but look, the, the results are not good enough. Let's call it like it is. Uh, but, you know, we, we're not saying the talent was good enough. It clearly was not. But he's got to do a better job. You know, not giving up points was good, but they also had an easy schedule. But the lack of turnovers forced, the lack of sacks, these things matter. And this has been pulled to us by other teams, and they watch. They just saw a very passive defense for majority of the season. Um, well, one of the guys that's supposed to help you get talent – They've lost now a second front office member. Brandon Brown, yeah. this time to a yeah. division rival, goes <clears> to the Giants. He's the new assistant GM. We saw Ann Cunningham go to Chicago. So now two personnel directors. Is this going to be a problem? Yeah, this is something we talked about on today's Inside the Birds. Uh, I, the way we understand it is it definitely won't be a problem for the draft, save for one thing. We'll get a look, give you a little bit inside scouting note here. Um, they're, they're called of, uh, like over the top or uh, cross checkers for the draft. Well, they're down two key ones. Brandon Brown and Ian Cunningham are really good, you know, good evaluators, and you don't have them. So the, what Howie Roseman and Andy Weidel, uh, Howie's right-hand man, will have to do is they're going to have to delegate a little bit more in terms of cross checking to make sure that everybody they get these picks right. You know, basically, what cross checking means on each draft pick, each player that they would potentially draft gets several sets of eyes. Sometimes it could be seven or eight. If it's a low round draft pick, it might be only one or two. But Devontae Smith, trust me, must have had six or seven people turning grades for him. That's just the way it works uh, in the NFL. So that that's one area. But, uh, but other than that, they'll be fine. I think long term, they have to make a decision whether they promote from within, give certain people more responsibility. And now they, they've, and you know, Dave Cole's on that staff who can get more responsibility. But Dave, I believe, lives in Jacksonville. So I don't know that he'd want to Move to Philly, but uh, that that's what they can do. So it's something to keep an eye on over the next four to five months. Now, uh, Catherine Ricci also interviewed for a job. Is she a potential? Uh, will she get more responsibility? Do they have people in the organization uh, that could be promotions? Do they go outside the building? Yeah, Kath, Catherine Ricci is more on the operations side, Mike. So she kind of filled in for Andrew Barry after Barry left. She took some of his responsibility. So I don't know that she'd get any more. It's more on the scouting side, uh, to be honest with you, is gotcha. where they, they're going to have to make some decisions. All right. Uh, also, uh, you know, people keep asking me about Hightower, and, you and you know, he yeah. got uh, brought back to a reserve future contract here. He got no burn this year. Now, he was ahead of Watkins the year before and got nothing this year. So I guess this staff did not see Hightower the same way the previous staff did. I'm very surprised, Mike, to be honest with you. They brought him back. Uh, you know, Jeff Mosher and I, or, or Jason Avon, who does our pregame show and, and Q, the Q&A show, Jason worked with Hightower and told the truth in him about him. He said it more than once. He doesn't think he loves football. Uh, wow. Now, I know the kid, I know Hightower can run well. He's decent size. He's a good route runner. He's very talented. But he dropped the draft to the fifth round because of uh, you know, commitment to the game and so forth. And I, I just... And they, I remember when they, when they, we had heard and we actually reported, it, then it wound up happening. Keyshawn Johnson, uh, who they brought over from uh, the Cardinals practice squad, remember they promoted Johnson over Hightower, which tells you you would think they don't want Hightower back, but here you go, they're bringing him back. I, I don't understand this one. I know it's very minor, but why don't you just move on if you don't think the guy could help you? I mean, he, as you said, he didn't even play last season. Not, not at all. I, I don't remember being active Crazy. at all. Um, no, it was not. All right, Senior Bowl this past weekend. We talked Friday. You know, you hear a lot of things leading up. Now the game happens. Yeah. I don't know that the game is more important, but a lot of quarterbacks to discuss here. Kenny Pickett, uh, Malik Willis, Sam Howell. They were the three guys that are potential first-round guys people you know, could see. Uh, how did they do uh, with the finished product, those three guys there? All right, so you know what? I want to talk about Desmond Ritter. I, look, I – I still think he goes second or third round. I mean, potentially as high as the second. He's he's a gift to throw. I thought he had a good week. I was talking to our friend Greg Cosell today. He likes his tape. I and mean, he Greg kind of confirmed what I thought. Um, I think he and I both believe he can go the second. Um, I understand he, there's just some accuracy issues. You know, you, you, you watch his tape. Too many throws he missed, he should have hit. 
But the guy's got abilities, good enough athletically. He's got good enough size, decent, not a great arm strength, good enough. Pickett is a more of a finesse thrower, but a pro-style guy, very athletic, uh, more ready to play than probably any of them. Now, you worry about the small hands. I know it's going to be a factor for some teams. Carson Strong had the strongest arm in Mobile. Uh, this past week, Malik Willis probably a close second. Strong's got an issue with his right knee, which could, which could be medically flagged for some teams. Sam Howell's a little bit farther down the line, second or third round pick. Um, good, good talent, scrambler. Uh, we'll see where he goes. We'll, we'll have more, Mike, you know, on, on your show here in the coming weeks and also an Inside the Birds way in depth. And, oh, by the way, we're announcing, we actually announced today, Trey Thomas will be back with us. Um, he's going to do an offensive line series coming up soon. This week, actually, we're going to start, and then Greg Cosell will be back with us. We're doing free agency with him in a couple weeks, and then the draft. Uh, we'll do a draft show, so we'll go up breakdowns for us. And then Bailey Zappi is a kid from Western Kentucky who over – Two schools put up the most yards in college football, a passing yard. She's a see it, throw it guy, anticipation guy too. Doesn't have a great arm. Didn't have a great seam ball game, but had a good week. He's probably going to be a third round pick, more of a high end backup, low end starter type, but really a fun player. We'll be talking more about. And then, uh, yeah, you mentioned the game, Mike. There's some standouts. Yeah. Uh, Chris, and he had a great week. Christian Watson, with student from North Dakota State, Carson Wentz's school, great week. Made a great catch, a 38-yard catch, I think, something like that in the game. And he just had a great week. His college numbers went out wild. He would probably go in the second round. For him to go in the first, he's got to run really well at the combine. But he had a great week. A lot of personal guys I talked to really liked him. Um, on the Obviously, the Eagles have three picks, and a lot of people are looking defense. So uh, yeah. I know corner, linebacker. Uh, I think interior line is going to be a spot, too. Any of those guys stand out? I would say, well, Trevor Penning was a tackle. He was, he's six seven, six six and a half, six seven, uh, from uh, Northern Iowa, who's a stud talent. He he helped himself, solidified being a first round pick. Uh, corner, yeah, it's not what we're told. Is it? It's a average to below average corner draft. But Roger McCrary, corner from Auburn, was the best corner all week. He was great on Tuesday, great on Wednesday. Uh, I don't, I didn't get any um, intel yet back from the game, but he was very good. Kobe Bryant is a corner, spelled with a C, by the way, not with K. Corner from Cincinnati had a good, great week. And Travis Jones, you're going to hear more about him, a, a D tackle from UConn. Yeah, the Eagles, because Fletcher Cox could be traded for the draft, um, they don't have very good depth at D tackle. So, yeah, that's a good point, Mike. Travis Jones, he had a great week, very explosive, had some sacks, although you're not supposed to tackle the quarterback, but you could tell that they would be called sacks. Uh, tight end, the, maybe the, the deepest position for the draft is tight end. It's legit 10 deep, 10 guys who could probably start the next level. Not that the Eagles need a tight end badly, but they need one more. Definitely need one more. And I could see one take being taken as high as the third round for the Eagles this year. All right, Adam Kaplan, Inside the Birds podcast, insidethebirds.com. Real quick, before we let you run, are you as surprised yeah. as many people seem to be that Lovey Smith has emerged as the new coach in Houston yeah. pretty much? I would tell you a week ago, I thought Josh McCown was going to get it. I don't have a reason yet. I'm working on it to find out why Lovey got it. I do, I do know this. They, boy, Nick Casario uh, and Jack Easterby, Jack Easterby is the director of football operations. They developed a very good relationship with Lovey, particularly Casario. And they really, they, they also, I'm told, wanted to, if McCown got the job, they want to bring Lovey back as his defensive coordinator. Uh, so they want to Lovey back clearly. Uh, and they want Pep Hamilton back as their OC. And don't be surprised if Ben McDaniels, I'm told, he's, I think, maybe assistant receivers coach for the Texans, becomes Lovey's quarterback coach. Uh, so keep an eye on that. Crazy development there it was, you know, because they had said that Gannon was not a candidate and it was going to be between McCown and Flores. And then all of a sudden, uh, late last night, it was, oh, by the way, Lovey Smith is going to get this job. Yeah, well, Lovey had, inter Lovey had interviewed before, but it became serious and what we don't know it might has not been reported what what happened with mccown and what happened with flores we know about the lawsuits not he's not suing the texans but um it's just really weird i don't know it's uh we'll see if uh any of the guys who cover the texans have it but it, it's it's fascinating all right he's adam kaplan at kaplan nfl uh get the latest edition of inside the birds podcast wherever you listen to your podcast and we'll have more details on all the new shows off-season stuff draft specials free agency uh all right here on football at four all right adam you got it man. take care bud thank you